So I've driven to the outskirts of London today and right into the very heart of the countryside. Now there's a good reason that I need to come this far out of town because today I'm on the trail of a real legitimate elite World War III underground bunker. You know, some people out there might think, do these things really exist? And if so, where are they? And what do they look like? Somewhere deep in the woods is a little quaint cottage that is not actually a little quaint cottage because it's actually a, an elite World War Three nuclear bunker disguised as a cottage where they all go while war breaks out on everyone else I guess Unbelievable, you wouldn't think there's anything more than just a little cottage. But I'm told there's much more that lies deep beneath this building. It's interesting, it says in the Bible that they will hide deep underground in the book of Revelation. This was actually built for the Cold War when they thought Russia was going to nuke the UK but it says on the front that they still might use it Welcome to the ex-government regional HQ the home of central government in time of nuclear war while uh, we all run about trying to escape got a nice underground bunker but look, don't forget this bunker was active until the end of 94. It could still be reactivated. There are an ever-increasing number of nations with nuclear capability. We suggest you visit us now while you can. So let's take a wander inside this so-called cottage and see what we can find. I've never seen a cottage like this before. Man, this goes deep underground. You would not think from the front of this, this was underneath that cottage. Well, some people would be all right, wouldn't they? If uh, something happened uh, nuclear-wise. It's pretty cold in here. Look at these rooms, they're massive. Incredible. As announced earlier this evening, the United Kingdom was heavily attacked with nuclear weapons at one o'clock this afternoon. You are ordered, wherever you are, wherever a black fallout warning has sounded, to stay in your refuge rooms until you are told that you can come out. This order must be obeyed. We are way beneath the surface. 
Remember we came in through that cottage. But look at this. We can carry on all of the operations. Governmental operations. All beneath the surface of the earth. Social security. Look at this sleeping quarters of Got all these private rooms ready. Principal officer. Commissioner and the Prime Minister. Oh, oh, we've got Margaret Thatcher in there. I'd be David Cameron now, but it's got Margaret Thatcher in there. Um, well, like a model of her. And uh, obviously, this was during the Cold War in the 1970s, but now that would be David Cameron. Man, they've all got their own private rooms. It's all right, isn't it? Ain't too bad for a nuclear bunker. And these dormitories for people who aren't, who don't hold such high positions in the hierarchy, would be staying in one of these types of beds. These bunk beds all squashed in together. Obviously, the more, more important people have their own rooms, as we said all fed by these systems to keep the air clean because obviously if there's a nuclear attack they want to keep all of this air clean would you fancy being down here? I don't know if I would to be honest more beds more beds for the average workers There's a beeping going on around the whole place. I guess if it stops, you, you're probably dead. All these dormitories for the lower ranked officers, all very squashed in. Still a class division, even in a nuclear holocaust, there's still a, a gap in class obviously um, regardless of what is going on outside um, we still need to maintain our class differences as people it's like being in an episode of Lost wow Here's your washroom, the bathrooms and the showers. Apparently, when the bomb goes off, they can't replace the water, so they have to switch to using the chemical toilets instead. They've got 24,000 gallons of water in the roof, which would give them just half a gallon of water a day. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that, but the toilet paper says government property use, but use both sides obviously rationed toilet paper and the soap has got ER on it Elizabeth Royal now where do they go when they get sick you may ask well into the sick bay all these look it's all well equipped Man. It's actually rather creepy. They've got
got it all sorted. They even got x-ray machines. Obviously it could happen, you could get ill down here. While you're surviving the nuclear holocaust, you could maybe fracture a, a leg or, or your wrist while you're um, busy being protected from the end of the world in World War Three. No elite underground bunker is complete without a BBC studio. I mean, this could all continue. Mixing desks. And this is where the Queen or the Prime Minister announces to the country that uh, we're under attack with an atomic bomb from Russia. Remembering this was around the time of Hiroshima, but this is, as it said on the entrance, this, this could easily be used again by the government. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty more like this. But in the case of a World War Three scenario, it seems that they would actually perhaps reclaim this. Here's the computer mainframe running the whole operation. They've got so much. The black. The black. The black. Obviously this would probably be all updated if they were to use it again. Communication. So we're getting more into a military strategy zone here. Maps on the wall and organising what's going on in the country. Crazy. But just to give you an idea that this is all here, you know. And this is the this is public now. This obviously was secret before, but. Notice all the ventilation shafts running, running all around. Someone asked the other day, I saw someone put on Facebook, how do, they, how do they get the air down in these places? You can see that there's massive ventilation shafts everywhere, which lead to a big turbine. And yeah, for those of you wondering about the ventilation, this is the, what looks like a bit like an engine room for the whole place, where they have these huge, look at these. I 
massive air filters. I'm sure it's pretty noisy when all of this is in operation. I'll tell you what, it's freezing cold in here and slightly creepy. But these massive turbines, it's a bit like the engine room in Titanic, it reminds me of, but it literally powers and generates the whole thing. So the air is clean and free and the sewage is disposed of. Everything is covered here. I don't know how long you could last down here, but longer than up above. Make sure you get rid of the sewage, you know. You don't want sewage hanging about down here. Um, I'm sure you can imagine what that would be like. And look, it goes even beyond that. We've got a vast system. Like an engine room for the whole place. A vast and complex system of mechanics. Working to keep people alive. You know, I truly hope that this horror never comes upon the world in the way that some may expect. And ultimately God is in control, not, not people in this world, it's God that's in control. I know things have happened in the past that have been similar, like Hiroshima. And I hope that this world comes to know Christ before it's too late, before the book of Revelation really starts to to come to pass and Jesus Christ is the only way the only truth the only life the Bible is the truth it's prophesied all of these things Jesus is Lord there's the paupers they don't get a nuclear bunker they have to go under here and uh, kind of squat under a, a desk. And although sometimes it may seem like those, um, you know, those who disobey God, the elitists in this world who are against Christ, it may seem like they're winning. But remember, ultimately. God will have the last word. Jesus has already defeated evil on the cross. And just read the Bible, read the book of Revelation, see how it actually ends up. Don't feel defeated, you're on the winning side if you are born again in Christ, in the body of Christ. This is a spiritual war against um, the spiritual, not, it's not a flesh and blood battle. Um, Jesus will have the last say. That's why justice is good. People don't like to talk about justice. 